presence for Wednesday the 1st of October. I don't necessarily mark it as April Fool's Day. Morning prayer for today according to the New Zealand prayer book. So if you'd like to follow along it commences on page 35 of the prayer book. The sentence of the day, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Let me pray together. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship you in your presence. For your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us praise and worship God who has called us together. Let us celebrate God's, God's majesty and delight in the wonder of God's love. Together we shall confess our sins and receive assurance that we are forgiven. As the scriptures are read, we can allow God's word to speak to us and ponder its meaning in our lives. In our prayers, we give thanks for God's goodness. We pray for others as well as for ourselves. And we offer our lives anew in Christ's service. All this we do because we believe in the presence among us of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Hear these words of Scripture. If we claim to be sinless, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. If we confess our sins, God is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Spirit of God, search our hearts. <coughs> Let us in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. May Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name, and tell of your salvation from day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations, your praise to the ends of the earth. The psalm set for this morning is Psalm 55, and if you'd like to read along with me, it is in the New Zealand Prayer Book. Psalm 55, the whole of the psalm. Hear my prayer, O God. Do not hide yourself from my pleading. Give heed to me and answer me, for I am anxious and greatly troubled. Because my enemies shout, and the wicked press hard up on me. They bring down trouble upon me, and assail me in their fury. My heart is distressed within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come over me, and horror overwhelms me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. I would escape far away and find a refuge in the wilderness. I would hasten to find a shelter from the raging wind and the storm. Frustrate their counsels, O Lord, and confuse their speech. 
for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they patrol along its walls. Trouble and mischief are within it. Wickedness is at its very centre. Oppression and fraud never leave its streets. It was not an open enemy who insulted me, for then I could have borne the taunts. Nor was it a rival who made boasts against me, for then I might have kept out of the way. But it was you, one of my own kind, my companion and my intimate friend. Pleasantly we conversed together and walked in the house of God as friends. But I will call to you, O God, you, O Lord, my God, will save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I cry out to you in my grief, and you will hear my cry. You will deliver me in safety from battle, for those who, who, beset, who beset me are many. You, O God, will hear. You, the eternal judge, will humble them, because they keep no law and have no fear of you. The treacherous have raised their hand against those who are at peace with them. They have broken their solemn covenant. The words of their mouth were softer than butter, yet war was in their heart. Their words were smoother than oil, but they were like naked swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and the Lord will sustain you. The Lord will never allow the righteous to stumble. But as for the treacherous and the bloodthirsty, you, O oh God, will cast them into the pit of destruction. They shall not live out half their days, but I will put my trust in you. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 9, beginning at the first verse. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses, donkeys and camels, and on your cattle, sheep and goats. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The Lord set a time and said, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day the Lord did it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh investigated and found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died, yet his heart was unyielding and he would not let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace, and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, and festering boils will break out on people and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh, Moses tossed it into the air, and festering boils broke out on people and animals. The magicians could not stand against Moses because of the boils that were on them and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Your faithfulness, O God, is great. You are all that I have, and therefore I will wait for you. You, O Lord, are good to those who wait for you, to those who seek you. It is good to wait in patience for the salvation of the Lord. From Lamentations. Our New Testament reading this morning from John. Consider him who endured such oppression from sinners, 
so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that you addresses that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone who accepts as his son. He accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Late on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so the lame may not be disabled, but the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. We say together, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive honour and glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. You are worthy, O Christ, for you were slain, and by your blood have ransomed us for God, ransomed us from every tribe and people and nation, and made us a royal house of priests to our God. To one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and might for ever and ever. Amen. Well, what can we say in the book of Exodus, in the first reading, Old Testament reading, of course we hear about the plagues of Egypt, which perhaps may ring a few bells in our present time. We, of course, are not the Egyptians, nor is our government Pharaoh. We're facing a different test, perhaps one more closely aligned with our New Testament reading from John, which is talking about discipline. Now I don't subscribe to the view that our present uh, pandemic is in any way a test from God or a punishment from God, although we can reserve judgment on that until it's all over. But I, I don't think that's the case. I think it's, it's nature taking its toll. However, it's still a form of discipline. And it falls appropriately for us in the season of Lent. As I said to the Archdeacon yesterday, it's almost as though we're facing a period of enforced retreat. We're, we're required to stay home, abandon most of the activities that we would normally be doing. And therefore, for most people, they'll have some spare time on their hands. Well, how do you occupy spare time? Do you do it fruitfully, reading something useful or something educational or learning a new skill, such as a musical instrument? Probably not bagpipes if you're confined to your home. I have nothing against bagpipes, except they're rather noisy. What we should be focusing on is how can we learn as much as we can during these days, given that it's Lent. Lent, of course, is a time for reflection, for preparation for Easter. It will be a very different Easter this year, but we will have Easter, as always. It's a time of preparation, which means we have to ask ourselves, how can I best make use of the time that I have on my hands, because most of us do have more spare time than we did, to further 
strengthen my bond with God, to increase my understanding of what the Easter story is all about, to understand our relationship, not just with God, but also with each other. Pharaoh, of course, was a something of an autocrat, as leaders were in those days. He did what he wanted. Uh, he did, no doubt, seek guidance of astrologers and witch doctors and so on, but basically he did what he wanted to do. In a sense, each of us is like that now, because we can choose how we react to any external events. We can throw up our hands in horror and say, woe is me, what are we going to do? I have no idea, I'll just panic. Or we can say, what is God asking me to do at this time? It's always a good idea to read scripture. But even if you don't do that, there are other useful things you can do at this time. I think it's a good opportunity to reflect on our relationships with everyone. Because of course, when we're isolated, so relationships are tested. The relationships with those with whom we were living, and our relationships with those who we have a slightly more distant connection with. Those that we can reach through the internet, for instance, over phone or email. The people who we might normally see day by day or week by week, face to face, we can still reach. We can still spread good news rather than bad. Don't take too much notice of the uh, conspiracy theories, the that the fake news that circulates reflect rather on what we do know. And what we do know, most importantly, is what scripture contains. The message that God gives us, through Jesus, particularly through Jesus. The message of love, first and foremost. Treat all our neighbours as we wish to be treated. Love them. Now obviously in this case, it may not necessarily mean a face-to-face -face contact, but you can still wave. You can still reflect on you know, how others are doing. Do they need any assistance? We remember in particular those who are close to us, but we remember also those who are physically near, even if we don't normally have an interaction with them. All of these people are our neighbours, and God wants us to take care of them, to love them as he loves us. Amen. We now come to a period of intercessions. There's so much to be thankful for at this difficult time. We can give thanks for our leadership in church and state. We can give thanks that in this country at least we have sufficient resources to go around. We give thanks for good weather. We give thanks for the ability to exercise daily, even if within the confines of our own homes. We give thanks for those who are caring for others and for us in our physical, emotional, spiritual needs. And we give thanks for those who continue to work to keep us safe and resourced. We ask, O oh God, for our own health and safety, and for the health of safety and safety of people for whom we care, and for those that we don't know. We ask that people abide by the directions given by government. We ask for your mercy for those who are caught up in this crisis, for frontline workers, particularly health workers, and all those who are here to serve us and to help us get through this. We pray for the parishioners who are listed in the newsletter. We pray for anyone known to us who is in need of any sort. And we pray for a positive outcome as quickly as possible for both those people who are ill, those who are facing illness, those who have died, their families and friends, and all involved. We pray that God's mercy may be upon them. Amen. 
say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived with the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. And as our Saviour taught us, we pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Make your ways known upon earth, O God, your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace, and let your glory be all over the earth. Collect for the day. God and Trinity, Creator, Saviour, Giver of life and truth, reveal the possibilities within us that we may attain to the fullness of our humanity. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. And the morning collect. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created, and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live each day in love to one another, and to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.